and that is. Some of this we already know, but I think uh, it bears repeating. Our town, our community, our nation is in the grip of a terrible plague of opioid addiction. And we've seen it take local lives, most tragically young, but it's not just a disease that kills the young, it kills everybody, all ages, all social status, all corners of life. It's a plague that our police department, this town board, the New York State Legislature, the federal government can't hold by themselves pretty much. It is a plague that only a community can address. Now, a community has choices in addressing this. Now, one approach is kind of the approach that our society is taking toward the rampant proliferation of rapid fire arms. Where we observe moments of silence and we offer our prayers and condolences to the, the bereaved and we leave flowers in certain locations and then their life go on. And then there's other approaches, in particular in this case, when the community rises and decides it's going to try to do something. It can't guarantee success, it can't guarantee to save all lives, but it's not just going to sit back and placidly let this thing roll over us and kill people without trying to do something. But it's the right thing, the wrong thing, and it's going to do something. So as we all know, because it's been well publicized, the Woodstock Police Department, in cooperation with the town board, and with the assistance of family of Woodstock, and with the assistance of people from the community who serve as so-called angels, we've taken the approach of taking the stigma away from drug addiction and offering our public facilities, in this case our police department, as a conduit to treat. So our policy is that if you are addicted, particularly to opiates, and you are looking for treatment, you can come to the police department. The police department will put you in touch with a so-called angel while it is trying to facilitate treatment for you. Uh, yes, there will be a search, and if you're carrying any narcotics with you, they will be taken, but you will not be arrested. And as it also has been pointed out, this does not in any way lessen the police department's mission to extirpate the sale of drugs in our town. If you're a drug dealer, you're going to be gone after just as severely now as you ever were before. So this by no means lifts the, the responsibility of our police department to go after drug dealers where, where it is possible to arrest them. There are two members of our community who spearheaded this endeavor. Two of the most remarkable young women I've ever had the privilege to know in my entire life, and who I feel deserve the gratitude and the recognition of this town board. And I am, of course, referring to Ms. Shane and Cardinal, and Ms. excuse me, Cassandra Quadno. Got blew it, had to blow it someplace. And Shane and Makushi. And if you would come forward, I'd like to present you modest tokens of our esteemed thanks for your service to the town. Shane, that's for you. Yeah. Cassandra, that's for you. Thank you very much.
that is noticed by now that Jackie is not here. I, I, you yeah. want to do that? Yeah. Okay, so let's move the public yeah. scenario. Yeah. Oh, you want me to do that too? Oh, yes, I guess so. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Town Clerk. Two, uh, two speakers, Jill Fisher. Good evening. Just one for me. Um, summer is almost here, and uh, I don't know what has been done after last summer. I know there has been some issues with short term rentals in our town, and I think it's not just located. You know the issues uh, in my neighborhood, Broadview Road, but um, I, I imagine that they are popping up elsewhere. And I guess I'm here to say that I believe the town should enact some special um, uh, bylaws or ordinance to address that issue. Um, uh, there should be performance standards for. Um, houses that people want to rent out um, on a short-term basis. Uh, perhaps we don't want to see so much of it, but um, it'd be nice if we could say a minimum time. Uh, the problem is, is when people come in just for a weekend and they're, they're having a good time, they're not going to be there for the long term, so they don't care what they inflict on their neighbors. And I'm afraid I'm going to lose a very good neighbor because they happen to live next door to a property that is a half an acre built right up to the lot lines uh, in a three acre single family district. And that just doesn't seem very reasonable. It seems very unfair. This uh, afternoon I was out in my yard. I live three doors away. Two doors away from uh, this particular house, and I'm hearing screams and you know incredible noise, you know, going on and on and on. And I can't say I'm, I was bothered by it, but I noticed it very strongly, and I can imagine what it'd be like to be the neighbor right next door to that. Um, as you know, I have a background. I mean, I've been a city planner uh, for 25 years in my working life. I'd be happy to help uh, research and look at what other communities are doing to deal with this. Um, but I really hope that this summer we can address this issue before, you know, it all goes away for the winter um, when <coughs> windows are shut. And, it, and the noise and the music and you know all sorts of things that go on that bother us. So, um, I, and perhaps I, I really have to tell you I don't know if you've done anything since last summer. Uh, I believe there were um, issues made because I've seen the uh, notice on the town's website about things being considerable if you're here, and I. I I understand it's uh, an important uh, economic activity for our town, but so is so are the uh, real estate values and uh, the quality of life that Woodstock has come to offer people. And, uh, and I just want to add that I have a uh, second home owner on one side and a rental on the other side. Uh, Rentals across the street, Tom Bullard's uh, apartment building, no problem there at all. Um, uh, family in, in a house, just kitty corner, um, with three kids, never been bothered by any of that. So it's definitely coming from these people who come into town, they have a good old time, and work and leave and not be concerned about their impact. So I'm. That's all I'm here to, to add. Well, let me update you in the public. Not so much of what we've done, um, but what we're trying to accomplish. First of all, let's distinguish short-term rentals. There are those that are part of bed and breakfasts, which are permitted in all districts, all residential districts, I should say, and where the homeowner is present. And where I get very few complaints because the homeowner's there to go tell them to chill. Then we have the other type of short term rental, which I call, because it fits the definition of zoning law perfectly, a hotel. 
hotels are only permitted in the Hamlet commercial and Hamlet residential areas. They're not permitted anywhere else, or in the neighborhood commercial, excuse me. And we have many hotels. So for instance, it sounds to me like you're two doors down from a hotel. I know we have a member of the town board who's right across the stream from a hotel. So the question that we put to our land use attorney some time ago, and to which I'm expecting, I hope any day that we can to delay the road delay, is a definitive answer as to whether or not, because when our zoning law was constructed, we did not take into current consideration. However, there are those definitions in there, and there are those regulations. And so the question to him was, is there enough teeth in the current law to enforce? That is to say, can we go shut down hotels? And can we force the bed and breakfast operators to, as they're supposed to do, many of them do, but many of them don't, register with the building department? And the hotels that uh, would be permitted to handle residential and handle commercial would have to go to planning board for a special use permit. Now, as far as more regulation is concerned, uh, I, in my personal opinion, I'm only speaking for myself, yes, there, there is a need for more regulation, with particularly the hotels. Because again, I don't think we're getting much problem with bed and breakfast, with the homeowners present. But in the hotels, I do think we need more regulation. Now, in other communities, for instance, San Francisco, you can only rent your, you, you must be, you must be the primary, you must be in your primary residence at least 90 days a year. And you can only rent it for the remaining 207. That varies from community to community. But there's a number there where the, where the homeowners require. I mean, he can leave the place vacant, but he just can't let it out for short term rent for at least a certain number of days a year. I think that's a sensible regulation. The reason why I think so is because if we turn all our houses, our residences, into hotels, we're not going to be a community. There's no community in a higher hotel. It's just a bunch of rooms. So that, that's, that's my personal feeling about that. Now, there are other regulations for hotels where there is a 24-7 number where a live human being must answer the phone. So you can call them and say, you know what, your hotel's making a lot of rackets. Why don't you get over there and shut them up? So that's another regulation that I think is appropriate and should be added to add it for a regulation. Although, if a hotel were to go get a special use permit from the planning board, I, it would surprise me if they wouldn't put some sort of regulation like that into the special use permit, even under current law. Um, one of the reasons that I'm very anxious to, to uh, have the town uh, embark on a comprehensive plan discussion is because of this phenomenon. This is one, this is one of the things that really prompted me to say, holy cow, you know, this is a, it's a whole new time, a whole new age, and we really have to figure out how to address it. Woodstock, ironically, was known for its stinginess for public accommodation. We are now known for its generosity. We, I believe, have more B&Bs than anyone else in Austin County. So it's it's something that we yes, we are paying attention to. I don't think that we're going to have something on our books before this summer to necessarily make things peaceful and wonderful this summer, unless we find out that we can regulate effectively through our current zoning of the hotels, where again I think most of the problem comes from. Um, but so I, I just want to point out something else that you say because I think it's significant that yes, it is an economic boom. There's no question that having these, the, the, the increased numbers of accommodations has helped the economy of the town. There's no question of that. However, that doesn't mean that we turn our community into a commodity. Mm -hmm. There has to be a balance where all the interests are, are met. So I, I hope that's at least a partial answer to your concern. I could add on a few things. Uh, a few weeks ago, I went to a meeting at Elliot Allenback's office, <clears throat> and it was all about B and Bs and what's happening in the county. And yes, Woodstock has the largest amount of B and Bs in Ulster County. Um, there was pros and cons. People like them, people don't. Count, uh, some towns like it because of the economy. But this is what the county is doing right now. They are going to charge a two percent tax to all B and Bs. They are going to send out some kind of letter to have everyone register who has a B and who has some type of a B and B. The reason that's good is that then the local towns will know who's registered and who isn't. They said they won't be able to catch everyone because you know it, you know I'm sure they'll go online and try and find them, but it's hard to find every single one, but they're gonna do their best 
to, to find out where all the B&Bs are in the different towns. They're going to charge a tax. It's going to start in 90 days, 2%. Uh, eventually, maybe I asked if some of that would come back to the local towns. So then the problem became, OK, how do we regulate what's going on and who's setting up the laws? I made the suggestion at the meeting that the county come up with a list of standards that they could give to the towns and say, this is what we want. We want a fire extinguisher. We want exits. We want you know various different regulations to make sure that these people who are doing BMBs are at least following safety regulations, which would be that information would be given to the local building inspector, the fire departments, and whoever else is running who takes care of that. Um, but also the, the, the real issue for me also was that they said that they would not set up, they could not set up zoning regulations because so many towns are involved and, and that every town has different zoning laws. So it really is up to us to eventually come up with a set of standards that, that are in our own local laws that work for the B&Bs. And um, the county's not going to do that. So, you know, is that going to help? Hopefully, eventually, we will get people registered. We will, they'll be charged tax. They'll have to have a little more, um, uh, you know, they'll have to be a little more public about what they're doing. And so it would help all of us to get that information. And hopefully, we'll move forward with some type of zoning. Just getting people who have B and Bs to register with the town puts them into a category where they would be uh, the building inspector, the fire inspector would go out and do an inspection of the property. So there's a benefit to them as well. That sounds fine. I guess I will always uh, distinguish B&Bs uh, from hotels myself uh, as a planner and, and in other places. And the law is quite clear on that, I, I believe. B and B's um, often are used to help uh, historic properties remain viable, and uh, as long as owners are uh, present and you know breakfast is served, it really is a whole different animal than people who are just uh, turning over their homes to whomever they can sign up online. So anyway, I I just want to reiterate my uh, offer to help with that, uh, look at performance standards and whatever. Well, I, I, I don't want so, like to mention that when I stepped out for a minute, but we are waiting to hear back from one of the town yeah. attorneys. Yeah. Yeah, okay. The B&Bs are mostly B and Maria's. <laughs> what? The B&Bs are mostly B and Maria's. So, uh, so you got a band, and then go direct, then go to Maria's. <laughs> oh. uh, since, this, since we made this a topic, I see Paul have his hand up. Yeah, um, Jeremy, if we're in town board, if you don't have it yet, I think you're about to get a letter from us, the planning board, um, asking if you would like us to start to research the short-term rental, and you were so gracious last year to put an extra 5000 in our budget for planning for that. So I don't know if you received the Did letter. Did you guys eat that up already? No. No? No, we're okay. saving it for short term. Yeah. We use some of it for the NCLI, mm -hmm. but we still have 5,000 left. You know what, I, I think I talked to John about that the other day. I know we talked about a lot of subjects, and I think that was one of them. And I just asked him to hold off until we get this letter, this opinion uh, from uh, Because from what Kathy's Brandon. talking about, again, yeah, you're targeting the bed and breakfast people who are trying to do it legally right now. So you might get a few more of those that are going to come in. But you're not going to reach the people that are doing the short-term rentals that aren't living in the house. They're not going to come register out of the goodness of their heart. No, of course not. So, yeah, either, so either through enforcement, right. through knowledge of the zoning officer knowing about it, you go put a uh, yeah. order to remedy on the job. No, or you come up with zoning for short-term rental, which would require a special use permit. And at that point, you can look at screening. You can look at the outdoor lighting, noise, all those yeah, standards. Yeah. What's that? Right. All those decisions get to be reviewed, you know. But again, what's going to force those people to come to the planning board to apply for a special use permit? That's what, the big the, question. How do you get them to come? Two, two and things. Just step One, out and either the local enforcement officer through complaints catches them. But the other thing is the, that Airbnb, that the website, is very keen on their um, 
users obey all local laws. In fact, I know that they were very keen to see this uh, pillow tax go through because it legitimizes them and their business. So they're only too happy. You know, this 2% just gets tagged on to whatever they're already collecting. So th they're not a opposed to, to working with the communities and, and providing a list. Yeah. Airbnb, Airbnb. Airbnb. Oh, Airbnb. The, 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 the website. Well, that's just one company, though. It, it is one company, but it is the biggest so, one. And you have private. You don't need Airbnb. There are so many real estate brokers that bought these yeah. or closures in 08. They don't yeah. need Airbnb. Yeah. They just have to have an office in Hamlet. Yeah. <laughs> and that's where you should reach out to. I mean, those are the community that you have to wake up on this and say, folks, what you're doing is not legal under zoning. Well, here's the thing. Yes, I agree with you. However, and that's why I wanted this legal opinion before going after them. Because when the, when the zoning law was crafted, we never thought that people were going to be turning their houses into hotels. We were thinking about, you know, yeah. the people would come in and build hotels with 20 rooms. Of course, but the zoning law says so, if it's not listed, it's a pro pro prohibited use. Yes. We agree with Again, you. we agree. That's we agree. all. That's we're all we're just, a house out we, just want, we just want an assurance sir, that we we're renting enough to make it a hotel for me. If you rent a house out, it's not the same as the Woodstock Lodge, Waterfall Way that's before us. Those are the only thing that we get as hotel right now. You're never going to see a real hotel in Woodstock. Right? So we're getting bungalow communities right. that are legal, that are permitted uses in their districts. Yeah. I mean, that's what you see. But, but, it, but if you look at our definitions, we believe, and this is the opinion we're waiting to get back from the attorney, that if you, if you take your house and rent it out short term, and you're not there, it falls under the definition of a hotel, which in, in all but a handful of uh, zoning areas is not allowed. So. Yes, sir. Thank yes, you. hi, I'm Will Shepley. I also yes, to speak here. on the same subject. I'm actually the neighbor right next to the house that Joe talked about at 11 Broadview. It's my address. And I had I wrote the town board uh, last summer about this same property, same subject, and nothing's really seemed to change at all. It's, uh, it's incredible. It's, uh, this house is on a half an acre, and it's got three rental units in our three district. There are um, three, three different rental units? Three, three, three different units. But they rent it as one big, you know, under what room? one clave. No, it's three separate structures. Well, $700 a night, <laughs> 10 plus guests. I mean, right next to us. It's a hotel. It's a hotel. It's, 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 the use is, is such a huge impact in a, in a quiet residential neighborhood. People coming out. Mm -hmm. It's really should be outright banned. I think. Mm -hmm. I, I think any short-term vacation rental when the owner's not present should not be allowed in the residential district at all. It's commercial use. Yes, commercial use. And when the, the owner's not there, like you all said. People you know, they're out of town for the nice. weekend, they don't care, they'll do anything, they'll make as much noise, and I've complained so many times to them, to their, to their rental agent, and they've, they've tried. Who's their rental agent? Um, it's just uh, just some woman, I don't remember her, uh, don't remember her name, but she gave me her number a while ago. It's just you vaca it vacation rental us. by owner is what it is. If you go ahead and call my office and let me know. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just they're skirting around the law. And, and mm -hmm. You don't need registration. I mean, it's a, it's a good idea, but what you need is regulation. Right. Mm -hmm. to really well, address well, the other thing it seems we need, and maybe Jeremy's going to get this as he gets more information from the attorney, but we do need, a, need people to know steps they should take. So you know you have an issue. For enforcement to happen, who should you be telling? Is telling the town board the right place? Is telling our building inspector the right place? Do, do we know what the right steps are for somebody who has an issue today? You know, they should have an enforceable situation today. What is the yeah. steps that we need? Are you complaining to the ZEO? To the ZEO? The ZEO? Yeah, the ZEO complaint. Yeah, the zoning board. Yeah, what about the police? I know there was an issue originally that it had to be the owner who was, uh, the police had to speak with the owner and if it's a renter. But I can't remember now if we changed that part of the law. I thought if, we were if, looking into that if there's, a, if there's a noise problem in the middle of the night, though, you should be calling the police. Yeah, yeah, but I think, right here, what I hear consistently people saying is we, I think we all know we have hotels where they're not allowed. So when somebody knows there's a hotel where it's not allowed, that's what, what we is believe. The, that's what, what we believe. We're waiting to hear. Oh, I, oh, I. The, the um, okay. I should just say, just 
And as far as noise, I mean, what's what's allowed? It's 53 decibels during the day, 57 decibels at night. Yeah, way. That, that is our conversation right now, is about 60 decibels, probably. Yeah. You know, there's no way anybody could comply with that with the 10 unit in you know, our 10 room, 10 bedroom rental property with mm -hmm. a pool five, five feet from the neighbor's property. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I guess my point is still, is still say, say the attorney agrees illegal things are happening based on the zoning, the zoning law is not being complied with. What part of our answer to the community should be telling them steps they should take to, to address? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I mean, it was a, a torturous summer last summer, and we can't oh. take it, so we're moving actually. I'm going to rent out my house, but I'm not going to. Oh, every day It's not going to be a vacation rental because I would never do that to my neighbors. So we're doing a long term mm -hmm. rental, which is probably one of the few that you could find in town. Well, oh, I am the councilman that Jeremy mentioned before who has the same problem and yeah. I sympathize with you because every Friday night mm -hmm. there are carloads of folks who pull up in the, in the dark, they have no clue that anybody is there and the music starts and by midnight they're just getting rolling, by two o'clock it's, it's unbearable. Yeah, and it's just constant noise, you yeah. know, if there was somebody there long term they would enjoy the pool once in a while, but not for eight hours at a day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's, it's just it's yeah. Iron intensive. Ironically, the same property owner over the winter, he usually does a longer term, like November, December, January, February. And that's typically uh, a young family. And over the last three years that it's happened, it hasn't been a problem. Now, granted, the windows are all closed, and they're not in the pool. Right. But the longer term folks staying, are a little bit more respectful. More respectful, absolutely. And that's why I think maybe that's the solution, just create no short-term rentals unless it's a registered B&B. Right. You mm -hmm. know, just 30-day minimum. Right. And that would get rid of the problem altogether. Yeah, and I have one right next door to me, by the way. Although although they seem to, I seem to not have unruly, rowdy people. However, they are always on my property because they don't know where the property line is. <laughs> So, so they're very nice. They say, you, you know, you're on my land, and they say, oh, we didn't know. And yeah, that's another people coming and going. I don't know who those people are. You know, right. There's kids in the neighborhood, like small kids. I mean, it's, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just so, so, so it should be regulated. I think we're all in agreement on that. It should yeah, be regulated. So I guess that's my question. Come on, Mary, same as Jill. What steps is the town taking? I mean, where, how far away are you from actually having? I don't think we're very far away from at least getting an answer to our questions as to how effectively can we enforce our law. Exactly crafted uh, long before this phenomenon came up of the short term rentals. Uh, and I mean, is the language specific enough where we can simply decide that these are hotels and go after them as, as illegally placed or, 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 or not uh, you know, uh, legally uh, functioning hotels? In which case, we will. That's, I, I just don't want to launch an enforcement and find out that we don't have a team. Right. So that's, that's what we're waiting for. And it shouldn't be long now. Well, and there may be answers too, because I mean, I, I don't. I mean, the Airbnb does seem to help the town from the standpoint that, hope, you know, the restaurants are happy and whatever. If people, if there were regulations and if people followed them and everybody got along, it might be a win-win. It's not a win-win right now because people aren't following regulations. We don't have it regulated, but it, in a perfect world, perhaps we could allow it with the right regulations and the right enforcement in a perfect world. I'm not sure. It would take a while to get there. Possibly, yeah. And but. like I said, this, this particular property next to me is um, it's non-conforming. Obviously, it's only half an acre in R3. So maybe the regulation should be, if you're non-conforming, then you just can't do it. You know? mm -hmm. yeah. Well, if this kind of situation were to get out of control, out of hand, which stock would become not just a tourist town, but a seasonal tourist town. And that would be the death of Woodstock, as well, we've known it so far. Uh, yeah, it would be a transient town with no permanent residence, no community. You yeah. Know, this, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. we're in the fear of that, that slowly happening, and it's upsetting to all of us who've lived here so many years, and now all of a sudden we're, we're losing contact. Every house on my block, pretty much, that I've seen sold has gone to weekenders. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's like there are fewer and fewer people who are moving in full time. <clears throat> well, if you change the regulation, we will move back full time. Okay. So um, we're working on it. I'd so like to do that as quickly yeah. as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yes. you for the comments. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you, Joe. Thank, thank you. you. So, so then also, what we'll, we'll do finally hear from the 
a turn in and get in some direction, then maybe we would be like on the board if, if we felt we needed more to take all Yeah, and I, and I saw the, the email, by the way, Paul, I did see the email saying, hey, if, we, if the planning board is going to address Airbnb, a few more funds to cover the plan would be good. Yeah, I did see that email, so we can consider that. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, do we have another? I didn't put my name on the list. I just have a quick question. I, I say give them one minute. I, I only need a half a minute. I, I came here last summer to complain about the parking, and I know that you guys have made some decisions. I was wondering when they're going to be implemented because we still have major problems. As soon as those signs come. Do you have any idea when? Oh, it should be soon. Okay. It takes about a month or so for them to make those signs. Great. And it, and Where do you live? Uh, just down from uh, the top one, McDaniel. So we're, we're, we go up, oh, okay. up yeah. and up okay. the top all the time. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm glad you mentioned that because something I just wanted to have a brief conversation with, we'll have it right now on the board, is after we adopted those regulations for Mill Street Road, <laughs> those clever little devils have started parking on, uh, on uh, Old Wagon Road. And so I don't know, we might have to extend these zones. Maybe. Everybody ready for that? In Mill Street. Yeah? <laughs> okay. You know what, I, I, since we're on this topic, I uh, happened to reach out to Jonathan Hapner, mm -hmm. right, county legislator, and got him at the perfect time because he had just come through Mill Street and barely fit through with the it's cars scary. on both it's sides. Just dangerous, dangerous, dangerous. And um, so we, he and I are meeting. We've had a, a phone conference with um, Bob Sudlow mm -hmm. from the county executive's office. And um, they recognize, particularly since they own property there, recognize the problem. And we're looking for some. Now, I heard the county was going to pay for the signs. They were offered to them anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll send them the voucher. <laughs> no. No. Too late? No. Uh, let, me, let me back up. They would make the signs. So they, they have the ability to make ah, the signs. Okay. Well, okay. for our future. But one, of the, one, one of the things we took oh, all the way in the stream side. Except those aren't county roads. Yeah. They, you know, we did a couple, mm -hmm. so maybe that's fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We've also talked about where they uh, enter the county property there that they may have, you know, they're willing to put up some sign about behavior mm -hmm. similar to what they did up at the Blue Hole. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. No glass bottles, no unleashed dogs, no boom boxes, no, boom, no loud music, no, no uh, bars of human. Mm -hmm. And if you can think of anything else, uh, they also no uh, seemed open to <laughs> the, <laughs> the idea of uh, a little bit more uh, sheriff department. Um, being there on the weekends, mm -hmm. as well as um, putting some trash receptacles there. Mm -hmm. I think our guys are over there picking up the trash. Yes, and there, there are some, uh, there was anyway in the upper swimming hole, there was a neighbor who would pick up the trash, and, 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 the, and our boys would just pick up the bag. Yes. Uh, they also offered, the, I guess they have a work crew that they send out periodically, so they thought maybe after the weekend or Every other week, they could send the screw out and deposit the bags up by the road for us to take away. Mm -hmm. So they're yeah. they're making efforts. Okay. Well, in addition to the you know continued crowd up on Meads Mountain, uh, I've also seen uh, vehicles parked along Mill Street. Mm -hmm. uh, the season is off to an early start, mm -hmm. and. Uh, Hopefully we'll get those signs in right away and follow it up with some uh, parking. You know, Nick, a couple of weeks ago, I, I, well, most weekends I'll take a ride over just to see how bad it is. And um, m most weekends I, I see either the guys are there writing tickets. We've seen Or, or they, they've been through. But one of the, the officers told me he was writing a ticket and the car in front of the one he was working on pulled out and somebody else pulled in and she got out of the car. She says, are you going to give me a ticket on the park there? He says, yeah, if you stay there when I'm done, you're next. And she says, how much is the fine? He says, well, you know, right now it's only 25 bucks. She says, I'm a parking fee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yes. In addition, though, to giving tickets or, or towing, is there a solution? Because people like hiking. 
and there's not enough parking. The well, the solution is for the DEC to make a bigger parking lot. And, 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 and in my it. opinion, to stop advertising the place. <coughs> now, I don't know if they're going to do that because our governor's just hell bent on giving our Catskill Mountains to the city of New York, but um, that's, you know, to me, I, I wish they would stop advertising it. And uh, Does the town own land to build a larger lot? No, but the state no, does. But, and the, the state, and, and the state okay. Jeremy and I did have a conversation with the state, and they. They did not promise anything, but they did say they would take a look at the possibility. Right. I believe that they were, they had been talking with the monastery and for a number of reasons that just didn't seem to work out. But they felt that maybe down along the road by Magic Meadow there may be room to do... A little bit. There's not a lot there. Right. So we'll see. They, they've at least expressed an interest and recognize they've created a problem. Right. Would, would it be useful for citizens to contact the DEC about this, or meaningless? Couldn't hurt. You Couldn't know, hurt, but I, I think they feel it. I mean, they, I, I know that they're trying very hard to come up with some sort of solution. Um, they were not at all opposed to the town's increased fines and uh, right. any efforts to, you know, they, 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 they were they, completely sympathetic. They also offered to put um, wording on the, the website to indicate that people need to be a little bit more respectful of talking. That helps. But at least they <clears throat> they know there's a problem. They're not dismissing it. I would say it wouldn't hurt to reach out and complain. Because the squeaking So it's the DEC we should reach out to. In New Pulse. Yeah. yeah right. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. More is better. Uh huh. Charging out with you and shutting them up on a bus. That was, you know, <laughs> we talked about that. That, that might not be a bad. Uh, Business for something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, well, maybe when we rake in all those fines, we'll start our own bus company. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, should we move on? Mm -hmm. Oh, Jay, you wanted to say something. I'm yeah, sorry. I have three fairly brief comments to make. This first one, I hope I'm also speaking to this whole board. I'd like to add our word to all of the words that have been broadcast about the death of Muhammad Ali. I believe that because he was a black man, he was easy to vilify as a member of uh, an Islamic group. I think as a black man, he was even more easily vilified uh, when he refused to join into an illegal, immoral war, a war that was started with lies from our government. And it's a remarkable and a wonderful uh, uh, example to me that the world at large has caught up with Muhammad Ali. And that's what I want to say. I just want to say, you know, I saw that again the first time in many years when we were when we were kings. Was that the, the title of the? Yes. Yeah. And uh, I completely forgotten about the overhand right that he was landing on George Foreman in that fight. Uh, the overhand right is it's a very unusual punch. I'm not a boxing name, so I, I learned from that show. But the overhand right is a very unusual punch because it leaves you right open for a left uppercut. So very few boxers use it, and, and certainly against George Foreman, who had you know these, these fists that could practically knock down a brick wall. But he came out, and he not the first one landed these overhand rights on, on Foreman that just like completely just totally discombobulated the guy. I think he won the fight right there in the first round just with that. He was an uncanny boxer. That's what I remember about him, the artistry that he brought uh, to that sport. Uh, it, was just, it was just poetry. It was just, it was just absolute poetry. And then, you know, of course, he got old, as we all do, and, uh, and, and the feet got a little flatter. And he probably took on, you know, five or six more fights than he should have. But in his prime, he was just absolutely brilliant and beautiful. I, I don't think anybody who's lived through the era of Muhammad Ali um, will ever be able to communicate the excitement uh, that that man generated in our generation. It was just absolutely, totally remarkable. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I, I, I think that his importance uh, 
supersedes his importance as a boxer. I see him as a citizen of the world, uh, uh, someone to emulate. The second thing I'd like to say uh, is I, I attended the uh, memorial vigil yesterday in Kingston for those people that were blown away in uh, Orlando, Florida. And uh, there was a huge crowd there. I'm sorry to say I only recognized one other Woodstock in the crowd, it was Chris Collins. Uh, but it was a huge crowd and uh, certainly Mike Hahn was there and, and blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> what I'm going to say now is very personal and I'm sure, um, no, not shared by uh, members of this board. I think that the most misconstrued words in the English language are a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Again, that's my personal, very personal thing. I know it's not shared. And the third thing that I'd like to say, and this relates very directly to all of us, members of the board and all the citizens of not only Woodstock, but New York State. Uh, <clears throat> I'm sure everybody here has heard these words in one form or another or one time or another. I disapprove of what you say, but I will defend to the death your right to say it, meaning that we can approve or disapprove of anybody's issues, anybody's uh, ideas, but we do not have the right to deny that person or those people the right to broadcast their thoughts, their feelings, their ideas. I'm sorry to say that Governor Cuomo doesn't see that this way. On Sunday, he issued an executive order uh, disbarring companies and institutions in New York State from doing business with New York State. That, to me, is a definite, clear trampling on the freedom of speech of people who support the BDS. The BDS um, stands for Boycott, Divestment, and Sanctions Against the State of Israel's Products until they, the State of Israel, um, uh, frees up Palestinian land several other points. Uh, whether you agree with BDS, whether you agree with the State of Israel or not, has nothing to do with all of our freedom of speech. And for the governor to step in line against that is to me outrageous. And <clears throat> in my belief, what motivated him was to put in his pocket the votes of a special interest group. Because immediately after he made this executive order, he was out marching in the Israel Day Parade. That's all I need to say now. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, I'd like to uh, add on, though, since Jay did bring up Orlando, is, uh, and the board may agree with this, is that I certainly, um, I can't say I share the shock and sadness, because I'm sure what people down in Orlando felt this far more than I could ever understand because they lived it, but I, I, do, I do feel shock and sadness for what happened in Orlando. And I'm sure that we all uh, feel the same way, and we all feel, uh, you know, our prayers are with everybody in Orlando. And still, I'm sure it's uh, it's going to take a while to get over all, all of that. So uh, that's a big a big thing, a big thing that went down down there. And uh, you know, we wish the whole world could improve so that prejudices of any kind, whether it be Muhammad Ali who who was black, or whether it be people who are the LGBT, um, it would be great to see a world where prejudice just was not there and violence against against groups should not be there. And I don't know if there's anything we as a board can do to take additional action there, but 
certainly, um, if, we, if we can, we will, I would say, because uh, that was a terrible thing that happened, and, uh, and our prayers are with all the people still uh, getting over it. I agree with that. Yeah. I just feel like it's, it's a shame that some of these terrorist organizations are giving people who have problems, who are violent, who are disturbed, an outlet to exercise these, these horrendous acts. And I, I you know, my, my grandchildren, they're all young, my, my children will not allow any of them to get even the smallest toy with a gun and because of the way society has, has changed. And I find, I, I applaud my children for that, but I, I find it's just so appalling to see that people are carrying out these insane acts because now they think it's okay because they have an outlet with these terrorist organizations. Something has to change with society. You know, I found myself in a, a, a short debate because I, I bowed out afterwards on Facebook um, and I won't get into the details other than, you, you know, there were a, a group of people and they were kind of name calling and squabbling with each other and they really had far more in common than not. And, I, and you know, I started, I, I said, look, this is, this is the problem with this country is that instead of looking for where we have common ground, and Jay, I always use you as an example because you and I are sometimes and we've had a number of cases where we were able to find common ground and get something. We something always about. talk. Yeah. The rest of the country needs to do that. And the world. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Well, of course I feel shock and sadness for the people in Orlando, but I feel deeper shock and sadness for the United States. It's been more than a year that 20 children were slaughtered, and we've done absolutely nothing with regard to regulating the weapon and slaughter them. Mm -hmm. And uh, my God, if we live in a society that countenances and just passes over the slaughter of 20 innocent children, what kind of a society are we? I've almost given up hope. Not completely. Anyway, so why don't we go to our business? Here's uh, yourself to hire Brett Ricks, a seasonal full-time worker for the custodian department of 1279 for the hour of June 13, 2016. Sorry. Okay. Right. Be resolved to authorize the supervisor to sign a contract for shared services between the town of Woodstock, the Western County Department of Public Works, and the townships of Curly, Kingston, Sodley, Shandaken, Marbles, and Howell, Ulster, Lopez. Second. Thank you. Aye. Be resolved to surplus the plans for chairs no longer needed at the community center. Be further resolved to offer the chairs for either the fire or library districts free of charge. Be further resolved to entertain bids per chair as the exact number of chairs in good condition is not determined. And be further results, such sealed bids and facts and emails shall be delivered to the time of the lady on June 21, 2016, to be open to the public meeting scheduled for later that day. And be further results of authorized the supervisor to dispose of any remaining chairs in the best interest of the town. Sorry. Do I hear a landfall? You know, I, I have a question before, mm -hmm. before we vote. Yeah. So my question was, and, and maybe, and Jerry, you, you were more aware than me about what chairs are being used. On Tuesday night, when we had a, a, a filled the capacity crowded community center, did those chairs get used, or did we have enough of the new chairs? No, we, we still have another two pallets of new chairs. Oh, good, right, so we didn't need those. No, we don't need those chairs. We use them for the bath, and, and we'll keep those for the bath, because that's where they do the art projects. Okay. So they get paint all over the crummy old chairs, <laughs> great. Okay, so we, 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 we okay. will save a number of them for the, uh, for the, paint for the art class. The bathroom workshop is in the back too, we several other rooms. Yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll save those for that. But as far as, no, you, you we have enough chairs to fill that room to the, to the, uh, right. to the maximum allowed by law. Uh, all in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. Whereas the time it was like entered into an agreement with the governor's office of scoring the Frederick Gosa. Huh? But did you skip it? Did you skip it? No, the street signs. No, the street signs. Plus the street signs that are being replaced by the highway department pursuant to the regulations of the state of New York. And for the result, the office of the public is assigned $35 for replacement cost for each street sign, no more than one per person, to the first person making the request for the highway department, either before or after adoption of this resolution. And the further result, payment shall be made to the South Town Clerk before such sign is released. Sorry. So, in favor? Aye. Mr. Stock entered into an agreement with the Governor's Office of Storm Recovery and goes on. For the purpose of receiving financing of up to $3 million to improve extreme weather resilience in the town of Woodstock, 
Whereas after a public process, four projects were identified to improve such resilience to wit, replace culverts on Lane Road and Reynolds Lane, replace storm drainage on Mill Hill Road from the bridge over Ferguson Creek to, to Maple Lane, and install culverts to raise the John Joy Roadway so that it didn't flood. And whereas hydrological studies performed by Malone and McBroom Engineering have shown that the proposed project to install culverts to raise the John Joy road, road, Roadway so that it didn't flood, we put properties upstream of the flood into the floodway thereby creating a severe hardship for those property owners. And whereas funds allocated for the John Joy Road project are approximately $200,000 with the understanding that more allocation may be necessary, and be reallocated at a future time to other projects to enhance storm resilience in the town of Woodstock. And as the town has received and will receive invoices for engineering work on all the road projects, and as the town has set up a separate bank account to receive and disperse funds for GOSAR related projects and now wishes to create a capital project to separately account for these revenues and expenditures therefore be it resolved to no longer pursue the John Joy Road project and be it further resolved to allocate funds set aside for the John Joy Road project to other projects as the town through a public process may recommend and GOSAR accept and be it further resolved to establish the GOSAR capital project number 0 .080 for the maximum sum of $3 million for the purpose of accounting for funds received and dispersed for GOSAR projects in the past. Okay. Thank you. I, I have a question. Yes. You know the, mar the markings that are on the road, uh, on the sidewalk? Yeah. Does it, it have anything to do with doing They've that? been doing engineering work. So that's on survey. On the roadway. Yeah. So yes, that that probably, those are probably survey lines. Oh, those are the, the, the water really sewer lines. They're, they're, marking, they're, they're marking out all the utilities for yeah. the survey. Oh, the oh, marking the utilities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So one side is the Kingston water pipe, and the other side is the Woodstock water pipe. Okay, but that's connected to the work that they're going to um, do. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, so they don't get a main. How's it going to be in the swamp? The water says fire. Okay. Might be a hydrant. No, it was where, where? I'll take a look at it. Uh, Bradley Meadows, right on <coughs> the sidewalk, and it said fire serve sunflower. So that's a that's a um, a water line going into sunflower dedicated to their fire suppression. Ah. I think they have two water services over there. Okay. Be resolved, Supervisor and members of the Town Board shall sign the 2016 Section 284 agreement with the Woodstock Highway Park. Second. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. So, before we forget, Dr. P. Lord, pass it down. Signatures, please. Everybody has to sign on. It's to the resolution we just adopted. It's the, the, the road agreement. How much is it? It's a lot. I, I, I've got your stash right under here, Jack. At the end of the meeting. system or the record of activities maintained and submitted by these members to the clerk of this body. Town clerk, eight hours. Town supervisor, eight hours. Highway superintendent, eight hours. Town board member, six hours. That's so, a lot. All in favor? Aye. Um, well, I think the point being that they're saying our day is six hours, but then I know I gave them a piece of paper that said how many hours I worked. So they're figuring out we're considered part-time. They're figuring out how many work days per week or per month we work based on a work day being six hours. So we are part-time and, and the numbers show that, I think. So I think. Whereas the town board received from the Woodstock Planning Board proposed amendments to the zoning law two, and then uses permitted or not permitted in the NC1, NC2, LI, and SLI district, to amend Article 5 supplementary regulations, to amend general standards, <coughs> special permits, to amend additional specific standards for certain uses, 
and to amend word usage and definitions, and therefore be resolved on this back on board pursuant to 6 NYCRR 627.4 B2 and Chapter 65 of the Woodstock Town Code Tweaker. One, declares itself lead agency to the proposed action. Two, finds the proposal action, proposed action to be type one. Directs the town supervisor to prepare full, a part one of a full environmental assessment form. Upon its completion, sends it to the Woodstock Environmental Commission for review. And five, in conjunction with such review, prepare the part two and potentially part three of such assessment form. Second. One favor. Aye. Aye. Be resolved pursuant to recommendation of the engineer for the town to authorize the supervisor to sign notice of intent to award to New Century Construction LLC, 11 Arch Street, Water Bully at New York, 12189, for replacement of the Mac Daniel Road Bridge. Second. 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 Uh, yes, 400. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, that was the lowest bid. Yeah, okay. that's the 404. 200. <laughs> there it is. Don't forget the 200. 404. Okay. That's the 200 that broke the bank. All in favor? Aye. Uh, we have resolved to waive fees for use of the front room of the community center by the Woodstock Library on Friday, July 15, from the hours of 3 o'clock to 8 p.m. as part of the library summer reading. Yeah, program. we were scribbled out 4 to 9 p.m. Our pages are scribbled out since 4 to 9 Yeah. No, we changed the time. They changed the time? Well, that's unacceptable. They didn't ask for it. Oh, okay. 4 to 9. I'll, I'll give them that. 4 to 9. All right. 4 to 9. <laughs> Okay. Aye. 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 Okay. Were you going to say anything more about burning and talking about the kind of topics? Well, that was it, really. You know, uh, we have the thing we've all agreed, sort of. Uh, yeah, we've all agreed that we were going to, at the planning board suggestion, remove all the references to the uh, to the new overlay districts until further consideration, and. Um, and take the original packet, which was minorly tweaked after suggestions and input from members of the town board, and accepted by the planning board, and uh, carry on. Is that enough discussion? I have all the documents, so I just didn't know if we were going to go over it. You want to dive right into it, don't you? <laughs> well, there's going to be plenty of time for that. Well, I've already... I've already did, you know, and I sent comments, and I've been to the planning board. Oh, well, I, probably if they were worthwhile comments, I'm sure they were incorporated. Well, yeah, a couple I said in with the planning board. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you something, Jeremy. In the, in the uh, latest document that I saw, there was changes that the planning board had, had passed back and read. And then there was, there was one, air, one spot there where there was a question in blue. Who was the blue? Uh, I don't remember the question mark in blue. The now, so wait, so the, in red, okay, so the red comments, I think what I was trying to illustrate were the changes that the planning board had accepted right. and adopted. Right. I think that was the purpose of the that's what That's what I believe, too. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, the blue question mark, if you give me a little more context, I could probably... The, you know, the only one I remember, because I remember at one point there was a lot of blue, and it may be questions that you and I had come up with at one point. Mm -hmm. But the only one, maybe this one got forgotten and left in, I think it had to do with the definition of museums. Mm -hmm. And I quibbled over not-for-profit versus... Yes. I mean, you could we struggled with that, too. Yeah. You did, too? Yeah. That's what you said. You know, I, I can't think of an example around here, but I know... Well, right? all, all the, the trouble we had is with... I think the language now says it has to be registered in the state of New York as a not-for-profit. And we expanded it to that it could be a not-for-profit doing business in the state of New York. They didn't necessarily have to be, uh, you know, their main headquarters didn't have to be in the state as long as they were registered to do business, to do business as a not-for-profit in the state. That was one of the things. And then we were like, should it be a not-for-profit museum? Should it be for profit? You know, what's the intent or the of the term museum, you know? And so we struggled with that one for a little, a little bit also. Mm -hmm. You know, as long as we're talking about it, I would like to say that I thought a letter from a member of the planning board, not you, Paul, to an editor in last week's edition uh, contained a, a, well, an error when he alleged in his letter that were we to adopt the, the larger overlay district, this would mean every single project would have to go before the planning board for a special use permit. 
And that's absolutely not true. The only thing that would have to go before the, the only additional standards that were added were if you, we were to establish another light, a floating light industrial district in that area, in which case those additional standards are added to the standards we already have. So I'm, you know, so, so far my phone hasn't run from people panicked and tearing their hair out. Maybe they just don't understand the implications of that letter. But it is wrong. The information conveyed in that letter is wrong. Mm -hmm. So I, I just want everybody to know that. I have a question for Paul. Do you have any idea how that property on Broadview ended up with three structures? How did that get passed up planning board? Did they come before a planning no. board? Yeah. Was it grandfather? It might have been grandfather. Those were all three buildings. So they were all yeah. there yeah. and they turned them into? Well, it could, it, could, it could have happened before the zoning law you went to place. And that, we would have to investigate to know how long the property was there right. and how long it was it was, it was different units. But it could, it could have pre preceded the zoning law. Because it just, I mean, I'm trying to, I mean, I know for what you Well, you have to is do it. Up the, is you it way go, up the hill? Or you is have it to go to the tax assessor, look at the last tax card, and see the last time it was just a single family dwelling on the property and what year that was. And then subsequently, when he's been taxing the property for more additional dwellings, there shouldn't be three on the lot in a three unit. There's only supposed to be two on any lot. Yeah, exactly. It can be either a principal dwelling or an accessory, attached, detached apartment, but there's never allowed to have three principal uses, which are three primary dwellings. But you may have had three buildings on there, and they ended up putting some sheetrock into a bed, and then yeah, I mean, there's bed. so many people converting things. It's it, they don't come before building or planning. I mean, it's just happening, and mm -hmm. that's what you're going to have a hard time mm -hmm. finding and digging out. Or those little but, ones all have sound. So if there. someone did construct a third structure on their property, and technically they're only allowed two, can we ask them to? Not that. Well, you have to not necessarily not well, down, to, but not use it as that kind of a structure. Well, you have to research the tax and see how long it's been on the tax rolls as a one, two family property or whatever, and see the predate zoning. The predate zoning then is going to be a pre existing non conforming uh, okay. status. If it's after zoning, it marked in 90, after the 89 zoning, only had his uh, one or two family property, and now it's three, somewhere. They've converted without the knowledge of the town. Mm -hmm. So, just so you know where the property is, it's right across from, it's on the, coming from Ohio Mountain, it's on the left hand side, right across from the Riding Club um, driveway. Okay. Along with the stone walls? Across from Tom. Right? Okay. You know, Tom's got the, the lower apartments have one entrance, yeah. so it's right across from yeah. that. Okay. I don't know if the stone walls or not. Yeah. Well, that'd be something to look into because if that's illegal, we should at least be able to mm -hmm. shut down one of those two, three. Well, I know there's another one happening in the old uh, Kingston Water Department house on South Hill Road. There's, a, there's barns and garages that get converted into apartments right there. Now, whether there's permits there or not for it, I don't know, but I know I've heard that, oh, yeah, she can't wait to get them all up and running to rent them out. The Kingston Water Department? Store? No, the old White House that was part of the Kingston Water Department. Oh, across oh the they Reddit. sold it? Yeah. Okay. Well, years ago they sold it. Someone just recently bought it and like converting some of it. There was one apartment, now there's going to be two or three in those outbuildings. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So that right there is a violation because you're only allowed the one accessory apartment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, whether there's a permit there or not, I, I don't know, but I know it's happening and we can't wait to get them done to rent them for the season. But, <laughs> well, that filled it. If the building predates zone, you don't have to put it in the planning board, but if it's a new building, you need for detached, right? Mm. Mm. For what? For for, no, for an accessory apartment. You probably want to go home. Uh, it depends on whether it's in the setbacks or not. Right. There's when, when, certain criteria. Mm -hmm. Yes. When, when, um, when we get to um, the public hearings for the zoning changes, would you please uh, have a marked up copy? Oh yes, of course. And you can have a clean well, copy. A, couldn't come to a meeting if you attended without it. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to do black and white or are you going to do color? No, it's got to be color red. Yeah. I don't have a color printer. It's going to be black and white. 
<laughs> so un underline you know, it. You do a markup. It makes it red, and then I can print it out on my color printer. Oh, okay. All right. Now you can pull it. Okay. <laughs> And Jeremy, I think Steve Winkler's coming for a meeting Thursday. Thursday, yes. Maybe you let the public know if anyone's interested, if they want to stop in and visit us. Well, anybody alarmed by that letter to the editor last week, <laughs> this is your chance to come hear it from the horse's mouth, you know, what it all means. So the top, yeah, top. Steve Winkley, who was the uh, from New York State Rural Water, and who was instrumental in helping the move subcommittee so put together to, to look at uh, water protection. Uh, it will be coming to the planning board to answer questions this pertaining Thursday. to this Thursday, yeah. Pertaining to those proposed. Which would be the 16th, I guess. Which would be Bloom's Day. Do you know the at time? At 6.30. Well, the meeting starts at 6.30, correct? Sure. There are the agenda at 6.45. Ah, really. So you can get back home in time. But I may not be able to make it. Yeah, and I'm not able to make it. I, I hate to say I, I wish I could be there, because I was certainly part of all the work. And Jay, I think you're planning to be there. Oh, yeah. Right, so that's only part of all that work and, and, and certainly in support of all that work. Um, yeah, I expect that Ed uh, will be there and Jerry Washington. Okay. Okay. I don't know for sure, but that's so. That's, uh, yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay. Well, so I'll be celebrating Bloom's Day. Oh. Which, of course, comes the day before Water Day. It's, it's a real day to celebrate. Mm -hmm. So. Anyway, I move to adjourn. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Okay.